So today, uh, in this meeting, we're going to walk through the um, design concepts to restructure merge requests and decide on, ideally, um, two, two design concepts to prototype and validate against our current design. And um, so we have, just for some context, we have these different design concepts that were added to this issue to converge on design concept for hypothesis. Uh, and we had designers chiming in. We had also um, Stanislav, our front-end engineer from Code Review, uh, chime in as well and, sh and share his opinion. And um, and yeah, I uh, in our Code Review group meetings uh, doc, I tried to uh, summarize a little bit of what the patterns I noticed um, of um, you know the biggest pros, uh, the not so big or confident pros, and what I saw as the biggest cons. Uh, some of them apply to uh, all concepts. Others are just to uh, specific concepts that I have named here: accordion or accordion and icon sidebar, tab concepts, and so on. And then we have a space here for open questions, but yeah, we can we can quickly go through them and and maybe talk about each of the design concepts and try to then choose um, two design concepts. They don't have to be exactly as they've been um, shown here. Or actually, let me open here in Figma, so we don't have to say, oh, we're going to go with the um, you know accordion sidebar concept exactly as it is shown here. Uh, what we need to decide on is just the basic idea of each of the concepts that we choose. And we can then refine a few things here and there. I mean, we will be forced to refine them when we get to prototype them and get them ready for validation so we can compare with the current um, design. Um, so, so yeah, any questions before we get started, Annabelle? Nope, sorry, I was on mute. That's okay. Um, right, so I'll again share my screen. I don't know why I stopped sharing. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, the most confident pros, um, I, I don't think they're worth, you know, showing visually but if, if if you think they're valuable uh, all of them are specific one we, we can we can do that um so having a dedicated comment view in some of the concepts um initially we were showing the comments in a drawer or sidebar so they were a little bit constrained in the space that you could use to see and reply to them um, and uh, the latest design concept that I shared, uh, which I, um, you know, just named comments tab, I think mainly because of, of that, is just having a view. Uh, here it's using a tab for comments, but you could apply this to all of the other concepts, basically. It's just having a, a view that you can access through a sidebar or through tabs or through icons. It doesn't matter, but you have this view here that uh, lists the comments, you can filter them, and you have a big area to reply to the threads. And you can treat this almost like a inbox inside of um, the merge request that you can then triage and action quickly on the threads without having to find them, scroll to them, and you know uh, go through them in the diffs or whatnot, it's just a focused view to deal with the comments. Um, and I think this is particularly helpful for um, the authors or people that are authoring the changes in a merge request. Um, but of course, this is also helpful for reviewers if they want to see um, the threads that they've authored and um, what is happening um, to the comments that they're leaving. Um, Do you mind if I chime in really quickly? Yeah. Should I be, should I be commenting in the document or what was the, what, 
yeah, should I be commenting in the doc or should I just kind of mention a few things here? Yeah, I mean, uh, however you prefer. Um, okay. I can, I can try um, I was, to take some notes. Oh, don't don't worry about it. I can, I can add them later. I meant to add them as comments on the latest design that you came up with, but um, I right. didn't get a chance. So I put them in a note for whatever reason. Um, the comment section that you're talking about right now, I think is... It is, it's so interesting. I'm wondering if we can continue talking about it as comments, but also keep in mind that it could be reviews instead of comments and it mm -hmm. could be a review object and maybe comments will be um, not removed, but like less important down the line. And instead of these comments, you'll see reviews and you'll be able to right. kind of toggle through all these reviews. That's all, just, just kind of keeping that in mind right. while I'm working on the review rounds. Yeah, yeah. I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, I, I'm i thinking that we could try to find a way to um, visualize the, if, if we have this, so there are two uh, ideas here. One is having a list of the comments and then the detail of each of these comment threads. Um, and uh, alternative is to have the threads shown stacked as you would see them in, um, for example, in Slack, if you go to the all threads or just threads area, you just see the threads and you scroll through them, but you don't have a table of contents. You don't have a navigation to jump to specific thread. You have to just keep scrolling through them. Um, but still, I think in, in this case, uh, we can try to have a um, a better visual indication and grouping of threads that belong to a review, for example, or even better filtering here to filter by a specific reviewer so you would see all of their threads. Um, and even here in the activity, which I think is perhaps the closest to what you have been exploring, is to have a entry in the activity uh, for the review. So if they've approved or just left comments or requested changes, um, you would have a, an entry. Maybe you can have the comments, just a blurb of the comments below uh, this one, or, you know, but just have a, a grouped thing that you can then click uh, to see, you know, Pedro approved and left five comments. So you could click here and see the um, the review in full. So you would filter by Pedro's latest comments, for example. Um, okay, yeah, that, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so yeah, anyway, um, I think people in the issue and then based on the negative feedback that they left um, or critical feedback that they left in the other concepts, um, where we just had a tiny area, like a sidebar or a drawer for comments. This felt like a big positive thing of having something like this, um, no matter how it's designed, like uh, these two different ways, but having a view that is big just for the comments where you're focused on them. Um, then the dedicated reports checks view, which is also applicable to um, any concept really is just having a view, um, which here in this in these wireframes I fleshed out a bit more. But again, these can be applied to any of the other design concepts. Having um, a list of the reports, code quality, SAS, continuous scanning, um, code coverage, metrics, accessibility, all of those, and you can then see the details. So you can drill down into each one of these reports, and this area would be you know up for consideration. This, in this case, it shows um, a low fidelity version of what we usually see for in the security um, vulnerability dashboard, but this can be whatever the, the, the report wants, basically. Um, and this was also well received from the angle of not only having a dedicated view to triage and action on these findings from the reports, but I think especially because it relieves the merge widgets that exist today in the overview tab um, from displaying so much information. So we could save all of that uh, to have just a status 
uh, a basic status and summary of the merge and CI checks of basically the health, what needs to be done to get this merged. Um, and everything else can then have its own dedicated view in the reports. Uh, but this, again, can be applied to any of the concepts if we want. So um, the pipeline widget in its current form would exist on the overview tab and not the reports tab? Yeah, that's, okay. I think, yeah, that's the, the other one. So we could remove the pipelines tab, which we already have some research pointing into um, that it's it's not that useful in favor of having the status in the overview, something like this. I don't know how exactly, or having it in the reports check reports or checks view. It depends on how do we call it. So we could have the details of um, the pipeline as well uh, next to the reports, basically. So you could drill down into each of the stages and jobs if you want. Um, but I think the simplest would be to just have the pipeline summary here. And if you want to dig into the pipeline, you go into the pipeline page. Or if you want to look at previous pipelines for this merge request, uh, there's already an issue open to uh, create a filter in the pipelines list to sh only show you the pipelines related to a specific merge request or a specific branch. Um, so I think we can get away with with that and, and remove the pipelines uh, tab. Um, then the commit picker in the changes view. Um, yeah, I think you're very familiar with that and, and basically removes, actually, let me remove commit tab in favor of a commit picker in um, in the changes view, um, which I think also, also, yeah. I like the idea. It's, it's going to be great for commit by commit reviews. It might be useful to have some view that shows all, I know you could just open the, the drop down and maybe see them all. It yeah. might be nice to see them all in a nicer view than that. Just because mm -hmm. when you, if you are using commit by commit, you can look at a page and just see all of your commits and it gives you a good like overview and description mm -hmm. of the merge request and what it accomplishes. Mm -hmm. Just a thought. I think I wrote that down. I'll, I'll, I'll write yeah. it all down later. Yeah, that's 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 an interesting um, approach. Yeah, I wonder if we could, so actually let me write that down. Um, yeah, maybe we can, we can try to remember, um, like instead of having the commit picker as a dropdown, we can have it like as, as an expandable section. So let me see. Yeah, this is just a quick idea. We don't have to, um, uh, you know, talk about it that much, but Instead of having this as a drop down here, we could have it as a something that expands and shows you um, the list of, of commits on top of the changed files. And we could remember how you prefer to have this. So if, if it's always shown, so you're always looking at the commits, or if you prefer just to have this collapse and you never change and never want to see the list of commits. So the, it, it might accommodate people that want to go to the changes tab and immediately see the list of commits so that they can click on each one of the commits and just see those changes. I don't know, it might be something, but yeah, yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, I, I think I explored that somewhere in one of the earlier designs, just showing them all and, and being able to click on them. They were like buttons and also a list, but yeah, that, that could probably come later. I think that this is a good good starting point. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, 
Yeah, filtering and sorting everything. <laughs> People were happy about that capability, you know, activity, comments, files, reports, you know, on each of the views, once we once we get to a certain number of items, um, you just need to filter and sort, uh, or else it will be very difficult to make sense of all of that information. Um, so yeah, people were happy about that. Um, I was just thinking also, maybe there's some activity pieces we can look at. Maybe they're not that important, or maybe we could batch or combine them. Like, you know, you see so many like added label and it's just, you know, it's not always that valuable to see every single thing. So maybe there are things we could do there. Or if like someone adds, you know, rebases and adds, you know, 50 commits and then the next day they do it again and it shows up as two, they take up quite a bit of space, those, you know, mm -hmm. added so-and-so commits. And then mm -hmm. you could just have that over and over and over and it, it that, that could all be batched together somehow. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That makes sense to me. Um, well, another thing that is only applicable to the non-tap concepts is the more vertical space for content. And that basically means that these concepts that have the tabs at the top, like this one or uh, uh, this one. So yeah, just having tabs, they take, as we already know, it's, it's what we have today. They take up vertical space. Um, and so the alternative of relying on a sidebar using uh, icons or expanded with, with an accordion or um, this one that has like a master detail view. So relying on a sidebar versus the tabs at the top, which you could say are is the difference between a vertical tabs or horizontal tabs. So in a way they're they're basically tabs, but you it's how you place them. Um it, it it's the trade-off between you know vertical and horizontal space. And and yeah, it's it's something worth thinking about and maybe uh, testing. Yeah, um, luckily, also with the navigation redesign update effort, it's uh, redesigns probably whatever um, the design updates that have been happening, or yeah. you know, that's been. What am I trying to say? They've been looking into things they can do with the navigation, and one of them doesn't have the top. Nav. So potentially we could be regaining what like a hundred pixels at the top, which is significant. Okay. That that's good to know. Do you think um from from that those conversations? And, and I mean, I, I think at the end of the day, and I was talking today with with Michael Leo about this as well. We're we're constrained by the the header um here at the top and the the sidebar on the left side. Um, and this is what we have to work with today. So we, whatever we do, I think we have to keep that in mind and try to make it work with that, those constraints. Um, you're talking about potential changes to the navigation. And even though they're maybe far away into the future, do you think that change of completely removing the header and just having all of the global navigation in a sidebar uh, do you think that is more likely to happen than other changes from from the navigation? Yeah, I, I think so. The last the last design I saw made just so much sense, and I think when they look at the tracking of the top nav, the most commonly clicked thing is the Tanuki icon or whatever brings you to the home okay. button, um, and then like user, it's not very much used compared to like the left side nav, I think. So it's there just because it's always been there. We just kind of always thought we might need mm -hmm. it and it's always been fixed as well. And so um, I think that there are a lot of compelling reasons to remove it and, you know, shift things around a bit. Right, okay. But I don't yeah. think um, that also is, you know, this design, I don't think it's dependent on that because from looking at just the rough versions, it doesn't look like it takes up any more vertical space than we already do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, no, exactly. Then, yeah, it's it's not making it uh, like if we if we 
keep the tabs it's not making it worse yeah right um yeah but that's good something to keep in mind as it might give some strength to keeping the tabs as we will potentially gain that vertical space um i think the benefits of the sidebars even you know shown expanded like this or um just having where is it just having the uh the icons or or both like we could have a expanded collapsed version of, of a sidebar is that you can um you don't need to have both so in in the tabs concepts like uh this one you have the tabs and you have a sidebar uh even this one you have the tabs and you have like you almost always it will be very difficult to not have a sidebar somewhere right um so with the concepts that don't have tabs we at least leverage those sidebars that we will kind of be forced to have somewhere to um yeah to serve as navigation as well so so yeah anyway it's just something to keep in mind i think it's to me in my my mind other than all of the other pros and cons it's more tabs versus sidebar i think that <laughs> from all of these concepts there it, it seems like they're all very different but i think in the end it's the biggest battle is hey do we go keep the tabs or do we try to shove everything into a very um powerful sidebar for navigation and content anyway th does that make sense to you yeah yeah i agree and i just think it's interesting that this latest one that um you posted it's it's got the tabs and everyone loved it so much <laughs> and i loved it too <laughs> wow tabs it's so innovative i'm just kidding it, it is it's really good i really did like this last one i think it's logical mm -hmm. it's not change for change sake it's like it's taking the tab concept and it's it's making it way more powerful and it makes much more sense the way that this is laid out and we still have the sidebar i have comments on that but we can get to it later yeah 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 i know i know yeah the, the that's okay let's see um okay so moving on uh, least confident pros uh so i think they're pros but still uh, might be something we need to test further and I don't think they're a blocker. Um, we can still test any concepts, but maybe something we need to look into later if we want, which one is to try to make better use of screen, screen space is moving sidebars. So uh, one example seen uh, here is um, when we are looking at the comments, if we're in a larger screen, moving the comments uh, drawer to the right so you can still see the list of change files so i think I, i'm not saying that this is the idea but i just think in general let's just try to keep our um you know keep ourselves open to these ideas and, and try to see what else we can uh, do to reorder contents uh, i think another example is uh is this one here in, in comments where you know, you can look at the comments, uh, the content of replies and so on, on one side, and the diff can be sticky and so that you can always maintain context. Um, and this is making better use of the screen state. If you have a smaller screen, we could show you, as today, you know, the diff at the top and the comments below the diff. Uh, so yeah, I think it's just this better approach to screen real estate in general. Um, file tree is more useful than a dropdown to jump to files. Uh, you commented on that. I think we're aware of that, it, what that is. Um, yeah, I think I'm, I'm confident on it. Um, I still think it might be something worth, you know, just thinking about more perhaps. Um, but I'm on the file tree camp as a user, but having it as a dropdown, from a designer perspective, it removes a lot of content and more sidebars, right? So, but yeah, anyway. Um, 
Another idea to have a comments drawer to look at comments and other content simultaneously with the ability to expand and enlarge content comments um, that can be seen in many of the concepts. One is this one where you can click on a entry from the activity view and it shows you the thread as a drawer and you can then click to expand uh, the thread and, and just see it in, in full screen or something like that. Um, and the same thing can happen in the uh, changes view, uh, which if you click on a thread, it would show in a drawer over the file tree, or as I just showed, you know, maybe in the right side. So this is, I think, I think something positive, but I don't think, again, it's something that we need to test right now and decide right now as, hey, this is our vision. We need to do this. I think it's something we can iterate towards. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, that'll be, that'll definitely be useful to validate because it, it never really occurred to me that having the comments in the middle of the diff was much of a problem. Um, I, to me, it makes sense. So when I look at the uh, the design where you have all the comments in the new design that you did, the comments on the, um, the comments on the left, yeah, that one. So sometimes to me, if, if, those, if that diff was a part of the actual comment thread, that almost reads like a table of contents in a way. And that is really useful too. Like you can toggle between them and you don't necessarily need to separate um, the diff and the actual comment. So like, it, it's just it, on the left, you basically have a list of all the comments so you don't have to scroll through them. You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. So yeah. I don't necessarily know if it's important to be like, okay, I wanna see the thread, but also the diff and then scroll through the diffs but also maintain that thread. Yeah. I'm not sure if that is a problem. Maybe it is, but um, this could work in, in a different way in that it's like a table of contents basically as well. So it could work two ways. Yeah, yeah, I agree, I agree. Um, then I think a positive thing from the accordion and, and icon sidebar, uh, or just, I would say, you know, the sidebar only concepts is that it's, I think more similar to IDEs and those workspace um, tools where you rely mainly on, on those sidebars. We see this in, uh, for example, VS Code, uh, and these allows you to toggle the information that is shown here. Uh, and the same thing with the accordion, expanding and collapsing sections of content. Um, yeah, I think that is something beneficial is that when users move between tools, they're already used to certain behaviors of navigation. Um, but it has its cons uh, on the other side. <laughs> um, what else? Tab concepts, we already touched this, similar to existing design, easy to understand. Um, one thing that popped up, uh, I think you and Marcel were very um, vocal about is that in the master detail concept, the file tree is immediately visible. Um, so in this one, when you go into the overview, you have these uh, navigation sections, but the changes and the, the tree is immediately visible below uh, and appears by default, uh, which is something that we can experiment with and validate if we try to prototype a one of these designs that relies on a sidebar for everything, right? Um, to navigation and, and so on. I think if we have the tabs, it will be very difficult to um, have an argument to always show changed files with a with tabbed view. You know, for example, being here in the overview and having the file tree here, but then you click and it goes to the changes and it might be a bit confusing. Um, what else? Uh, biggest cons, which is, I think, something that we already discussed because of the navigation and those constraints. Initially, I was thinking, hey, well, let's just, you go into a merge request, we auto-collapse the navigation sidebar. And uh, people were vocal about it, that they, they kind of hated that automatic behavior. And it was just me, I think, frustrated by the amount of Chrome that we usually have around the content in GitLab and that all of our features have to be designed inside of a fairly small space because of all the navigation that we have around. But anyway, I 
I think we have to embrace these constraints that we, yeah, the navigation sidebar has to be there basically. Um, yeah, accordion has a bunch of constraint of, of problems, uh, constraint space for accordion section content, um, the findability of the bottom accordion sections, uh, possibly two scrollable nested areas on small screens for the accordion. So it has its own challenges. Um, the accordion sidebar, this is an issue if, if we even want the accordion to be collapsible is if we have icons here on the left side, right next to the global navigation, it might be confusing, um, but I don't know, maybe something worth testing. Um, does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Um, icon sidebar, hard to convey meaning primarily through icons. And then, yeah, this one, this was a long shot. So in this, uh, in this concept, you had this idea of um, content navigation and then sidebar overlays. So you could click here to change the content, but these ones below would only show <laughs> a different sidebar over, yeah, it, it's it's sophisticated. I, I, I think <laughs> it's uh, not too critical way to put it. Um, and and yeah, it's it can be confusing. I think if you know how it works, it can be powerful, but you know, it's, it's as in the, the first tries you, you have to wrap your head around it. Um, so that was a big con. And tab concepts, we already talked about this. When we have tabs, we have less vertical space for content. The single view performance concerns uh, in a nutshell. And yeah, and then we have um, some open questions, one that you've been battling for some time now. Do we have a sidebar only on the overview? Uh, or not for the details or the metadata. Um, and Marcel, he had this concept of, okay, what if we have some or all of the metadata sticky? Uh, and then like when you, well, not sticky, but when you scroll, it would hide and you would click here to show it again. Um, yeah. I'm concerned about vertical space again. Um, I, although it's nice that it's compact. Um, yeah, I'm concerned about it. I'm I'm wondering, like when I was looking at this idea, I was thinking that in uh, one of the design, this is just an example. It can be applied to the some other concepts, but in the designs that we have tabs, um, if we were to use something like this, uh, an icon or a button with a label uh, that says details to open the sidebar. If we can also have some avatars here for the um, authors and reviewers when you close the details. So um, that would be, I don't know if I can do this now, but let me see if I can. Well, it's not the best, but you know. So it's kind of isn't that kind of like what I was looking at with the sticky header um, on the changes? Yeah, I would have like the exactly. author, the reviewers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's that's basically yeah. So um, I I think a couple of things. One, the um, the option that Marcel came up with, he he mentioned it like before the or maybe during the beautifying UI thing. We were trying to figure out where we could put that metadata, and he was playing around with that header too. Um, the problem is like all of a sudden you've taken these tiny pieces of metadata that work so well in a sidebar because they're small and they belong in a nice column. Yeah. When you put them vertically, they start to wrap. It's just like our project page. Like depend, you have to, now we need to account for so many different screen widths. And if they're, let's say they're like a hundred labels because that's what we do at GitLab. Where, where, how do you show that? Is it like a drop yeah. down? Does it, does that expand again? So you've got like yeah. expand and expand and, and all that kind of stuff. I, do like, so in one of the concepts, or even maybe this one, we talk about showing the sidebar potentially on more than just the overview tab, and you have that little icon to open it. Mm -hmm. Something I, I guess I didn't really consider when I removed it um, a few milestones ago, 
the thing I don't like about it is that it, it does clutter the page up and it all of a sudden we have to deal with, again, all of the different screen widths and all the different configurations that people might have. But if we opened it on those different tabs, but it was a true overlay, it's just like, it's just for informational purposes. It doesn't stay open. It doesn't shift the content. Mm. Then maybe it's not so bad. Maybe if you are like on the changes and you have that sticky, you know, icon somewhere in the sticky header, that's like, Hey, right. who is this? What's the label again? Click it. Oh yeah. That sounds okay mm. to me. Um, there's something about like the current sidebar experience where like it pushes the content, most of the content kind of breaks depending mm. on how small the screen is. And like the the look of the text wrapping as the thing is animating out, yeah. it always looks very like juvenile to me in a yeah. way. Like it doesn't look like a polished product when we push content around. Right. That's just a weird personal thing perhaps, but yeah, if, if, no. yeah. if we have different metadata showing in, in some way, if it is truly just here it is, and then you click down and it's gone, kind of like a drop down. Mm -hmm. Maybe that is okay to do, or maybe we can continue to explore different ways to figure out which metadata is most important, depending on where you are. But if people do want it all the time, yeah, maybe we could do some kind of so, collapsible sidebar. Not collapsible. Show sidebar, hide sidebar. So like um, like we have the drawer uh, when um, when you click. Well, this is not a good example because there are very few columns. But in this case, I think, oh, let me see. Okay, so we have more columns. And I think if I click on one, yeah, it just, it overlays the content, this drawer. Well, th this is moving, but you know what I mean? You click here yeah. and it overlays the content. It does not shift it to mm -hmm. the, the right, I think. Oh, in this case, okay, yeah, this. <laughs> this is the last one. Um, yeah, yeah, maybe. Um, or maybe it doesn't need to be a sidebar. If we're doing something like that, maybe, I, I can't think of an example, I guess, but if we need to show metadata, just because someone can't remember where they are and they don't want to leave where they are, they don't want to leave their current context, maybe right. there is a way we can show that without pushing the content and having to design and maintain all of these different it's like the yeah. maintenance i don't want to build for you know making it easy to develop i want to build to make sure it's easy to maintain because every time we do you know different things for different yeah. a million different screen widths it, it just breaks at different areas and I, I hate seeing that unpolished experience yeah yeah i i completely understand yeah i, I think that this is mainly a problem in the concepts that have the tabs um, because we may we may be able like this one in this one the metadata the idea would be to show it in the overview so that <laughs> that completely negates the problem it's like okay if you want to see the metadata go to the overview but there's another one Yeah, this one would be to have the sidebar here with the information. And this one would be like the accordion. You would see the metadata here. Um, and if you want to just peek at the metadata, you can just expand and collapse the overview. But yeah, it's problematic. I, I agree. Um, but I, I think that we can still make progress here and try to prototype and test something, even if we don't have an answer today to whether we show it um, always on all tabs or all views or just on some of them or we toggle it. I don't think it, it affects, of course, the, the merge request experience, but I don't think it affects the navigation, if you know what I'm saying. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, I, we're, we're almost, we're, we need to, to wrap up. So, um, yeah, just general thoughts. I think when I, when I started looking more closely at this, um, my, my feeling was that we were, I think in the end kind of, uh, talking about 
in, if we try to break it down to the essence of this discussion, it's really between, hey, tabs and, and maybe a sidebar here and there, or let's just do tabs, uh, sorry, sidebar for everything. So tabs versus sidebars. And uh, my gut feeling is that we should try to look more into that and, and test, bring those two concepts to test. But I, I, I don't know, I wanted to your take and, and you know, looking at everything that we have here, uh, what do you think would be helpful to uh, prototype and validate? Yes, yeah, certainly the latest one with the tabs and potential sidebar is the clear crowd favorite, which I agree with and it makes sense. It, it matches what we currently have. It won't be too jarring of a change for anybody um, who already uses GitLab or who comes from a competing product. I need to look then about, I mean, I, I think I, I understand what you're saying, sidebar versus tabs. Um, I think that does make sense. I'll need to, to make like an informed opinion here i need to go back and look at all of the other options yeah, and figure sure. out what you mean by like which sidebar one is it pieces of each one to combine into a sidebar or is it kind of taking this new one and then like just just kind of updating it to use more sidebars instead of mm -hmm. the uh the taps because i think the way that this is this one is organized makes more sense than any of the others yeah even though they're very similar yeah, I think so. The 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 content, like what we are showing, um, in 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 this concept of the comments tab, what we're showing inside of each tab, that can be replicated to the sidebar concept. So basically, what we're deciding is: do we want tabs to navigate between views, or do we want a sidebar to navigate between views? Which we can also leverage to show, um, you know, other sidebar content like the file tree or metadata or uh, the list of comments or the list of reports and, and the report view. So we can basically this area can be the same as we're seeing in the other concepts. It's just the difference between horizontal tabs and or vertical tabs, more or less. Um, I think <laughs> I think that the accordion has uh, is different. Like it's not as much vertical tabs as this concept here with the icons. This is definitely more uh, vertical tabs. This one is a mix where you expand and collapse sections, and you also change the content here. So it's both tabs and accordion all in one. And it has that those problems that we mentioned, you know, of like this is very can be a very constrained view if you have a, a lot of things here, for example, the file tree or the, the reports, um, the, the sections at the bottom may be out of sight, uh, but we can still do the same thing here. Um, so if we imagine that, uh, like very quickly, let's imagine that. Um, let me see. Okay. So let's imagine that these are actually tabs. And let me just remove this. And here you click to go to the overview. And we show the overview content and the metadata sidebar. You click here to go to the changes tab. And we show the file tree and the change files. You click here to go to the reports tab. And we show the list of reports and reports detail. And you click here to go to the comments tab. So this can also function as a navigation. The advantage is that this is much visible. The downside is that we're relying on icons <laughs> to communicate everything here. And it conflicts with the global navigation sidebar. Um, but yeah. But anyway, I, I understand what you're saying. And uh, we don't have to decide right now in this call i think we still have time and if you can look into that um today uh tomorrow morning i will look at everything again and and make a and make a decision okay so are you thinking like literally just i mean we just talked about this forget it actually we don't need to make a decision right now 
Okay. Yeah. Um, cool. This this was helpful. I think uh, this is recorded so that others can um, can follow this discussion. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm very happy with where this is going, and we have a lot of great ideas here that we can mix and match. Um, and um, and yeah. Yeah, I'm so excited too. I love that last one. Me too. Very much. So I hope it tests well. I hope that that's it. And everyone's like, this is amazing. It's perfect. Let's do it. And that's that. Yeah, yeah. I hope so too. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Annabel. Uh, it was great seeing you. Thanks for the feedback. And uh, we'll talk later. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye.